ischemic necrosis of the brain tissue has tendency to liquefaction, which is also called encephalomalacia. Ischemic necrosis in the most of the organs in the human body is associated with uh, coagulative necrosis. However, ischemic necrosis in the brain is associated with liquefactive necrosis. That could be explained uh, by the aggressive enzymes from the activated microglial cells, uh, which uh, liquefy and destroy the brain tissue. And this is how encephalomalacia looks like under the microscope. This is the viable part of the brain, and here we have the focus of infarction. Ischemic necrosis can occur via two different mechanisms, either thromboembolism or in situ thrombosis formation. Both of these mechanisms are associated with vascular obstruction. On the higher magnification, we can see necrotic debris inside of the infarcted area. And uh, typically, we see a lot of these macrophages that came to phagocytos, uh, the necrotic component. They have uh, typically these small bubbles inside of the cytoplasm, and they are also uh, called the foam cells. Some of them uh, have uh, hemosiderin content in the cytoplasm, and those are hemosiderin laden macrophages, also called siderophages. Those are the macrophages that phagocytosed hemosiderin. In case infarcted area is associated with uh, bleeding, which usually is, over the time this infarcted area would be completely liquefied, and the result is postmalatic pseudocyst. The smaller defect can be healed via the formation of the glial scar tissue. So all of these cells are activated macrophages. Here we have some viable retained blood vessels. So this is typical histological appearance of the encephalomalacia. Thanks for watching.